I thought I would do a quick video on defrost controls on heat pumps. So, most common defrost controls are going to be time and temperature or your demand based defrost. Most of the time, you're going to see time and temperature, which is what this system has Goodman's, Carriers, Temp Stars, ICP products. Um, older ream rud products things like that uh, more modern systems are going to have the demand based so i'll explain that in a little bit but basically the difference between the two is your time and temperature is basically going to be a situation where you have a defrost switch which on this particular unit is going to be these two red wires between r and dft these two wires go to a switch that's somewhere down in the bottom one of these loops on the coil two three four somewhere towards the bottom and and that switch is going to have a temperature setting where it closes and then it's going to have an opening temperature when it warms back up, it opens to terminate the defrost cycle. This particular unit that we're looking at tells you here this defrost switch is going to close at 32 and then it's going to open back up at 68 degrees. Most of the switches will have that stamped on them with like an L32, L34, minus 30. Um, L32 minus 30 means it closes at 32 opens back up at 62 so when it warms back up 30 degrees 30 to 62 degrees it's going to open up so that's kind of how these operate typically when i show up to one of these units and it's frozen first thing i'm going to do is look down in the inside of the unit where the switch is and if it's frozen out here more than likely it's going to be frozen where the switch is and if it's frozen and it's covered in ice that switch should be closed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull these two wires off and then I'm gonna check continuity through that switch and see if it's opened or closed. If it's open, then obviously you've got a bad switch because if it's covered in ice, it should be closed. Uh, if it's open, it's bad. If it's closed, it's good. If it's closed, then I'm gonna start investigating my defrost board and checking that. That may be the problem I'm having. But typically how this is gonna operate, this system's gonna run. Um, up here, you'll see on this one right there, I'll make sure I don't block the light so you can see it, but you're going to see this little switch, that little jumper switch there, you've got 30, 60, 90 on it. Uh, that's going to be minutes of run time once, once that switch closes, it's going to go into a defrost cycle every 30, 60, or 90 minutes of run time. So there's a built-in timer on this. So as long as that switch is closed, it's gonna it's gonna run that operation every 30, 60, or 90 minutes. So what'll happen is it'll initiate a defrost cycle after one of those run times. Um, the switch is closed. It's gonna go into defrost cycle. Uh, when it runs in defrost, obviously it's switching to cooling temporarily. It's gonna shut off the outdoor fan to eliminate wind chill, speed up the efficiency of this coil heating up. But it's going to switch into cooling. It's going to send a signal back into the air handler to turn on your auxiliary heating to cancel out that cold air while it's running and cooling. <clears throat> it's going to absorb heat from the indoor coil, transfer that heat outside like it typically does in air conditioning, start to warm this coil. Once that switch warms back up to its termination point, it's going to open. The control board is going to terminate that defrost cycle switch the outdoor unit back into heating mode it's going to cycle the heat strips off and it's going to turn the condenser fan back on so there's a relay here on this board for your condenser fan you've got an in and an out that's a normally closed relay it only opens during a defrost cycle so that's pretty much how this operates and troubleshooting it is pretty simple i'm just going to check verify that your switch is closing if it's 50 degrees outside and your switch isn't closed you're running in heat mode maybe that coil is not cold enough to close that switch so you can test the cycle just simply 
come down here disconnect one of your fan wires off of that board turn off that fan and continue to run the heat without your fan running this coil will get cold eventually it'll start to frost and you can kind of test that as the system operates to confirm that it does close when that coil actually gets cold so that's another way to test that um, obviously you can take it off and put some ice on it something like that but to kind of test it in a real-time operation as if it was operating just turn the fan off force freeze this coil outside uh, once that switch closes you can plug your fan back up and you can go ahead and initiate the test pins to force this thing into a defrost cycle and check the operations this particular unit uh, most of them just have a set of test pins where you can just jump them if your switch is closed it's going to go into a defrost cycle when that switch opens it'll terminate that defrost cycle um, this particular brand of equipment uh, is a Nordon you actually have to put a jumper between your T2 and your DFT and then jump common to your test terminal and once it starts you'll break the jump to common and then it'll run in a defrost mode until you terminate your defrost by removing that jumper or it goes into a max timeout um, usually anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes of these units uh, running a defrost cycle it will automatically terminate um, you can have situations where you have a defrost switch that sticks closed and at some point some newer systems if it runs through a max timer uh, multiple times uh, in a defrost situation uh, it'll shut the system down lock it out but this particular unit if you wanted to test the board itself you could just disconnect your defrost switch from the board you can jump these two terminals right here with a set of jumpers initiate a test cycle that simulates the switch closing let it run for a couple of minutes and then jump out that test cycle and then when you disconnect your jumpers uh, it'll terminate that cycle but some of them also have up here if you look this one has a delay and a delay off meaning um, kind of like some of the trains some of the newer units uh, when the system goes into a defrost cycle it'll actually open the contactor shut everything down first and then it'll switch the reversing valve to cooling it'll open the relay for the fan it'll come on it'll run in a defrost cycle when that defrost cycle terminates it'll open the contactor back up close the fan relay energize or de-energize the reversing valve back to heating operation depending on obviously if you have a ream or any other system that energizes in cooling or energizes in heating then that contactor will close back and bring everything back on uh, a lot of the train systems will break the contactor switch the reversing valve turn off the fan come back on run in defrost cycle then they'll turn the fan back on for about 20 seconds to pull the heat out of this coil then it'll open the contactor switch the reversing valve back and then it'll cycle back on in your heating mode so it's kind of called a quiet operation if you heard any of the older heat pumps switch in defrost cycle a lot of them will make that move while it's running and you'll hear that loud the compressors the sound changes the reversing valve switching while it's operating it's pretty loud um, this just gives you an option to put a delay on it where it basically just cycles everything off switches into defrost cycles back on defrost cycles back off comes back on in heating it's a lot more quieter uh, the time and temperature defrost controls are not as efficient as the demand based um, because these things can go into defrost cycle uh, when the coil is not even frosted or cold enough to really be in a defrost control or a defrost cycle um, the, the demand based is going to have an outdoor ambient temperature sensor it's going to have a coil temperature sensor and then as the outdoor temperature drops and that coil temperature drops it's got to build an ag algorithm that determines between those temperatures the temperature spread when it needs to go into defrost so it doesn't defrost as often 
and it doesn't necessarily defrost when it doesn't need to be, which means less of heat strips being energized, things like that. So um, this is gonna do it as long as that switch is closed and you've got that jumper set on, I, this one's set on 90 and this region 90 is perfectly fine. You don't need a defrost cycle to be running very often. Um, once it gets cold enough, it'll do what it's supposed to do at the 90 minute setting. But if you got the thing set on every 30 minutes of runtime and that switch is closed, and, and you could you do need to check your refrigerant charge. You should have a low. You could have a low enough charge on the system that it's prematurely closing that switch. The coil's getting prematurely cold when it doesn't need to be, or reaching that uh, initiation temperature when it doesn't need to be, but not necessarily low enough that the coil's going to freeze and turn into a block of ice either. So uh, there could be conditions that could allow this to happen when it doesn't need to happen but the demand date the demand based defrost is a lot more efficient doesn't happen as often it only happens when it needs to be which eliminates all those opportunities where it could be energizing your auxiliary heating in a defrost cycle which is kind of why you need to have auxiliary heat installed on a heat pump even in the south i know some um, areas and some videos i've seen some guys a little further south that say they sometimes will just put in a heat pump and won't install heat strips and that's okay but on those times when it does get cold enough to go into a defrost cycle you don't want 50 degree air 48 degree air blowing back into the house while it's in defrost cycle you want those auxiliary heat strips to come on and cancel that out because uh, you spend seven eight minutes blowing 48 degree air into a house when it switches out of defrost now the system's got to run longer to go back and uh, heat back up the house where you've been blowing air conditioning in it and obviously you want auxiliary heat in case something happens to your outdoor unit and you can't run it while you're waiting on a part or you're having an issue you can switch it to emergency heat and have a little bit of a heat source to get you by until your uh, repair is done for your outdoor unit but um, obviously you've got your pressure switches things like that but the biggest issue was just kind of explaining a little bit of how I'd time and temperature defrost control works it's just basically waiting for this switch to close when it gets cold and based on what your timer is set at it'll run a defrost cycle every 30 60 or 90 minutes of runtime until this switch is opened um, meaning it'll go through a defrost cycle it'll open but when the defrost cycle terminates if it's still cold outside that switch is going to close back fairly shortly and then 30 60 90 minutes it's going to do it again until the weather gets to a point where it's not cold enough that the unit is going to freeze but key points are you show up on one of these units that outdoor coil is frozen if you've got this particular defrost control first thing i'm going to do is pull this off and go ahead and check continuity and see if that switch is closed if that switch is not closed and it's covered nice and more than likely that's your problem you can go ahead and switch the system into air conditioning and bring that indoor heat out warm the coil from the inside i typically while it's warming from the inside out i'll start spraying it down with water on the outside start getting that ice melted off and then you can put a set of jumpers on there and simulate an actual switch that works test that control board and verify that it works initiates a defrost cycle then disconnect your jumpers defrost cycle would terminate uh, you pretty much at that point determine that your sensor or your switch is going to be your problem if you put jumpers on it and it still will not initiate a defrost cycle then more than likely you just need to get a new defrost control and typically whenever i get a defrost control for a system i'm going to go ahead and order a new switch with it as a combination and then i'm demand based if my sensors they you're going to check those basically by um, 10k sensors usually are what's on there so you can own those sensors out check those sensors verify that they're reading accurately and uh, that's typically the problem you'll have with those most of the time is you have a sensor reading out of range and that, that defrost control does not initiate defrost when it should because your sensors are reading inaccurate temperatures and then you can just order new sensors um, it's hard to really jump those out most of them will go through a test cycle but they'll come right back out because you're waiting for those coils to warm back up or at least your coil sensor to warm back up so even in a demand-based defrost control 
if I'm ordering a defrost control, I'm also going to order two new sensors along with it. But that's just a quick video kind of explaining how defrost controls work. Like I said, you're going to have a wire that is going to send 24 volts back into your heat strips to turn those heat strips on while it's in defrost to cancel that cold air. Um, obviously, you've got your reversing valve and energizing and de-energizing, but the board controls that in defrost cycle, not the thermostat. So, anyway guys, quick video, basic operations on how defrost controls work on most common heat pumps. And uh, just remember, if you don't have a switch, you're going to have a demand-based and you're going to be looking for an ambient temperature sensor and a coil temperature sensor.